I'm back again, my second time, and I've been writing like crazy on some things, and I've come up with some little short stories that I've challenged myself to do in 500 words or less. Most of them are right at 500. One of them is a lot less. So I've got three of them to read for you tonight. They're not very long, and I hope you enjoy them. The first one is called The Dollhouse. Just a week before Christmas, I'm looking at the dollhouse my daughter just has to have. I stare at the price tag. Where am I going to get the money? I could rob the corner grocery, or I could go all out and rob the bank, but I'd be for sure wind up in jail and ruin Christmas for everyone. I heave a heavy sigh and head for home. If only I hadn't lost my job last month, I think, I would have had the money. Well, no use crying over it now. I still have seven more days to figure something out. Turning the corner, a gust of wind lifts the scarf around my neck up over my face. Before I can pull it down, I bump into someone just rounding the corner. Oof. Why the hell don't you look where you're going, he grinds out. So sorry. I didn't see you. I apologize. Are you okay? Yes, no thanks to you. He scowls at me, straightens his jacket, and stalks past me. Bah humbug, I think. But I shout after him, Merry Christmas. He visibly flinches as if the words had hit him. Oh well, I have my own problem to solve. Straightening my scarf, I notice a sign tacked to the light pole. Wanted, somebody to clean house. Two days work, substantial pay, inquire at 425 Elm Street. I quickly pull down the sign. I, clean, I could clean the house, I decide, and the money could be enough for the dollhouse. Quickly, I walk towards Elm Street. I push the doorbell. The door jerks open. Well, what do you want? The man I bumped into at the corner growls at me. I stare wide-eyed and swallow. I came in answer to this. I hold up the sign. The job's filled. He snarls and slams the door. I stood dumbfounded. Well, bah humbug to you, too, I think, walking down the sidewalk. Come back here, he shouts. That sign has been up for weeks, and you're the only one, he said, to come. The job is yours if you want it. Oh, yes, I turn and smile. I do, thank you. Preparing to heave the final trash bag into the dumpster, I notice an old dollhouse catches my eye. Carefully, I pull it out. With a little paint, this will be perfect, I think. Cautiously, I carry it to the house and ask if I can have it. He frowns as I tell him why I want it. It's no use to me. Take it. He sighs and then quietly relates how he lost his family long ago. The dollhouse was to be a Christmas present for his daughter. He sighs again. At the first of the year, I'm moving to a retirement home. There is no room for the dollhouse or any other memories there. It was built for my little girl. So take it and give it to your daughter. A tear slides down his cheek. It's time this Christmas present found a home. This is on a lighter note. This is called Some Assembly Required. Betsy's Christmas present, a doll buggy, arrived in the afternoon mail. To save a few bucks, I bought it online instead of the pre-assembled version at the department store. Some assembly required. Shouldn't take too long, I mused, reading the back of the box. How hard it could be to put a doll buggy. I turn the box over. It slips out of my hand and spilling the parts and jumbled mess on the floor. Oh, crap, I think, sinking down to the floor on my knees. It's going to be okay, I assure myself, as I search the empty box for the instructions. You're smart. You can figure this out. Monty, I yell, get your butt in here and help. Much grumbling and groaning filters in from the living room as he walks through the door and joins me on the floor. It's been an hour since some assembly required started. Where do you suppose this goes? I pass a funky looking piece with two notches and a screw hole to money. I couldn't see a part letter on it and I didn't look like it went with A or B I had been struggling with. I don't know, babe. I'm trying to figure out how C fits into D so that E can attach with this wing nut. He turns, <clears throat> he turns what I guess are C and D over in his hands. I see the wing nut on the floor. 
Where's that part E? Let me take a look at it, I say, reaching my hand out. That's just it. I don't see a part E. He looks bewildered. It's now been three hours since some assembly required started. I'm giving up trying to get A to fit with B. Never gonna happen. Part A has two notches and one screw hole, while part B has three notches and two screw holes. Deciding I'd had enough of A and B, I put them down none too gently off to the side. I decided to take a break and look for E. If I found E, maybe it would make sense how A fits with B. It sounded reasonable at the time. It's now been five hours and Monty has deserted me. There has to be a solution to this. You have a PhD for crying out loud, but not in doll buggy, buggy assembly, I remind myself. <clears throat> I ter carefully take apart the pieces we had assembled that looked more like a deformed transformer than a doll buggy and lay them out on the floor. Part A, B, C, and D were there. I put them aside and checked the instruction sheet again. Besides the elusive E, there should be F, G, and H. I put them into the pile with A, B, C, and D. And the wheels. Yes, we have wheels. I look at the parts on the floor. All except one have been accounted for. It's that funky little piece with the two notches and one screw hole. Turning the piece over, I peel back the Made in China sticker, Part E. <laughs> And this one is really short. It's called The Dead Mouse. <laughs> I stop by the bread aisle last and grab a loaf of whole wheat. Place to get on top of the stack of groceries, I head for the checkout. Pushing my overloaded cart down the aisle, it hits me. That rumbling in the lower gut, that churning as things move closer to the end, that automatic puckering, I have to fart. You can hold it. Pucker up, I tell myself. Slowly, I walk on towards the end of the aisle, careful not to do anything that would cause it to slip out prematurely. I pucker tighter. Don't think about it, I caution myself. Just hold it in, but that only makes me think about it more. Maybe if I walk slowly, that woman with the bawling brat will move on and I can relax and let it silently slip out. I look over my shoulder. The coast is clear that way. I look back. Good, that brat has pushed the cart around the corner while the mom was bending over grabbing something off the lower <clears throat> bottom shelf. She yells and runs after him. Whew, that was close. I think, realizing that I can't hold it much longer, the pressure is building. Glancing over my shoulder, I see that the coast is still clear and I slowly relax and let it begin to slip silently out. <laughs> ah, I'm smiling inside, savoring the moment as that aromatic gas bubble silently emerges. The air solidifies and my eyes burn, but the relief outweighs the side effects. My euphoria is short-lived as two chatty females start down the opposite end of the aisle behind me. Maybe I'm far enough away they won't notice. I move on quickly as possible without stirring the air too much and hoping that whatever lingering aroma would have dissipated by the time the women reached the brown and serve section. I reached the end of the aisle preparing to turn when I heard a loud cough. I looked back. Both women were wiping their eyes. <laughs> Whatever is that smell, one says to the other. It smells like a dead mouse, the other one says. I'm getting the manager. You don't know what kind of diseases these things carry. I snicker to myself as I roll on toward the checkout. Yes, sir, you have to watch out for those dead mice. <laughs>